Safwan ibn Umayyah, the one who's still not a Muslim, has a two month grace period. He gave him 100 camels. From the tribe of Ghatafan, Uyayn ibn Hisan, who was one of the, the Ghalil or the very coarse Bedouins, but he has a massive tribe behind him. He gave him 100 camels from the tribe of Tamim up in Najd. Al Aqra ibn Habis gave him another 100 camels, and so on and so forth. And he gave large gifts to Muawiyah, the son of Abu Sufyan, who was to become the founder of the Umayyad dynasty, and to the full brother of Abu Jahl, Al Hadith ibn Hisham. Basically, so many of the dignitaries of the Quraysh they go back with uh, fortunes. Perhaps up to 60 to 70 people were given massive fortunes. And the Muhajirun as well. All of the Muhajirun were given some of the shares of this booty. Not as big as 100 camels, but they're getting the shares of this uh, booty. And the one group that was left completely untouched with this booty was the Ansar. The Ansar were given basically nothing. Out of that, remember they were given the other share. Not this, which is the big share. They weren't given. And what is going to happen? Human nature kicks in. And some of the younger Sahaba of the Ansar began murmuring. And it clearly mentions the younger ones, none of the senior ones. Some of the younger ones began murmuring. And they say, when there is war, we are told to come. And when there is booty and money, we are nowhere to be found. And another one said, may Allah forgive Rasulullah. He gives to the Quraysh and leaves us even as our swords are dripping with their blood. He gives to the Quraysh and leaves us and yet our swords have their blood still dripping fresh on them. So it's human nature. Money is money. Wallahi, money is money. And don't think me and you would have done any better. Money is money. And you see people getting fortunes and you think they are enemies of Allah and you know you are you were fighting them the other day wanting to kill them and now they go with the fortune literally imagine 10 million here 5 million there and you're left nothing right and the Sahaba the younger ones began to murmur until finally uh, uh, Sa'd ibn Ubadah the senior of the Ansar he politely requests uh, audience with the Prophet and he kind of hints at them that Ya Rasulullah, there are, you know, you need to basically deal with this. There are, there's a sentiment that you need to deal with. And this shows us the wisdom of Sa'ad as well. That, and it shows us his Iman as well. Like he's not complaining, but he's not, at the same time, he, he realizes there's a legitimate issue that you need to deal with Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet asks him, Wa'ant, where do you find yourself? And he is put in a bit of a quandary and he says, I am one of my people can't help it. I mean, I am one of my people. We, we are feeling this sentiment, but you need to solve this. So look, subhanAllah, it's really amazing here. He is a human, but his Iman is in the skies. Wallahi, it's amazing. Look, you know, he goes to the Prophet I'm trying to solve this problem, not to complain, but still deep down inside, he's also having the same, the same desire. And even his response in the end of the day, I am one of my uh, people. And so he says, bring all of the Ansar and make sure nobody is in our tent except the Ansar. Nobody is in this tent except the Ansar. So they crammed until there was no space at all. And people are outside listening in from the Ansar, only the Ansar. And the Prophet ﷺ gave one of the most powerful lectures ever to the Ansar, which is full of praise of the Ansar. One of the most powerful lectures of the Ansar that he said that if all of mankind were to go in one direction and the Ansar were to go in another direction, I would go with the Ansar. And he said, Were it not for the Hijrah, I would be from the Ansar, meaning I can't help it, I'm born in Mecca. But if I could, I would have basically been from the Ansar. And he said, I give to some people because I fear for their greed and their desires. And I don't give to others because I trust that what Allah has given in their hearts, that fortune is more than what I can give them. And he said, the Quraysh is still new to Islam and I wish to comfort them by bringing them close to me. And he said, 
او الله اللهم ارحم الانصار وابناء الانصار وابناء ابناء الانصار او الله have mercy on the ansar and the children of the ansar and the children of the children of the ansar and he said at the very end a line that shook them to their core and the room began to cry until their beards were wet and he said that are you not happy that people go back with sheep and camels and goats and you go back home with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam are you not happy that people are going with money and wealth and goats and camel? And when we go back to Medina, you will have me in your midst.